The film begins in the lovely city of Hawaii, which is known for its calm seas and vast forests. There, we meet Sean, a daring young man who enjoys riding his mountain motorcycle so much that he takes risks and is terrified of many bumpy roads. He was walking through the woods one day when he heard strange sounds next to him. He became aware of someone hanging from his legs. He advised the individual to flee as soon as possible before they apprehended him. The gangster Eddie and his men get out of a fancy car and begin beating him up because he is a public prosecutor and has accused Eddie of serious crimes for which he could face long prison sentences or even death. So Eddie kidnapped him and repeatedly hit him with a baseball bat until he died. He did this to cross him, knowing that no one would be brave enough to defend him after that. Sean fled as fast as he could when he saw what he saw. The gang noticed him and attempted to kill him by shooting him, but they failed. Sean returns home in fear, unsure of what to think or do. He learns from the news that no one knows who committed the murder. He is surprised that someone is attempting to break into his apartment, and he is even more surprised when one of his own men, Eddie, arrives to assassinate him. So he makes a quiet movement and climbs out the window. At this point, FBI agent Flynn arrives and instructs him to remain silent and wait for Eddie's men, who are the first to enter the apartment with a few bullets in their hands, to finish them off. He grabs Sean and flees before the rest of the group arrives. Flynn wonders why he didn't report the crime he witnessed to the police, so he tells him that he believes the city's police are working with Eddie because they are corrupt. Flynn confirms this and informs him. He then takes him to the investigation building, but Sean is terrified and refuses to join the Eddie gang after what he has witnessed. In fact, he denies ever being in the woods. Flynn knows he was there because his fingerprints were found on the treasure he threw next to the body. He persuades him that if he testifies against the gang, they will be able to protect him and no one will bother him. If the gang is not satisfied, they will pursue him until he is killed because he is a witness to their crime and they must kill him. They are on a large plane about to depart from Honolulu International Airport. The plane contains the famous rapper 3J, his men Troy and Lori, as well as the girls. They are impressed when they first see them and want to lead them and take pictures with him. And we meet the flight attendants, Tiffany and Claire who are surprised that the FBI is searching the plane because Flynn and Sean are on board. The problem is that they will take up all of the first-class seats, and the pilot tells her that she must deal with the passengers who are planning to board in first class and persuade them to ride in the economy seats, which is a major issue for her. Simultaneously, we observe an employee behaving strangely after moving boxes to the plane's body and spraying them with pheromones. On the phone, he claims that the pheromones will drive them insane. Flynn and Sean arrive and sit wherever they want. Claire, of course, listens to all the talking and teasing in first class and makes her stay quiet. Sean is having a good time despite the fact that this is his first time riding in the first class. At that point, he meets the second agent, Sanders, who has been Flynn's partner and collaborator for many years. They communicate with the main building, informing Harris of their activities, location, and plane. Of course, economy seats are getting smaller, and everyone is crammed together. This bothers the passengers, and one of them is a businessman who is going insane because he is holding a dog with a broken brain, and the dog's owner, a Mercedes, is taking a picture with them, and she is happy. On the other side, there is a child with his mother, who goes by the name Maria. Because the child will cry the entire journey, the child on the other side will swap places. When the rapper and his band arrive, they are dissatisfied with their surroundings, but 3J changes his mind when he sees Mercedes and becomes happy. At the same time, Tommy and his brother, who are traveling alone for the first time, are nervously riding. And all of this is happening while Tiffany is only thinking about Sean, whom she liked the first time she saw him and went out with. After everyone has exited the plane, the plane is prepared, and the first thing the hostesses tell the passengers is critical safety information that could save their lives if something goes wrong. After everything has been completed, the pilot and his co-pilot, Rick, are given clearance to take off, and the flight attendants begin serving drinks to the passengers. This is fantastic. And then, in the middle of this normal flight, something strange happens. A huge box full of extremely dangerous snakes of all kinds is discovered in the plane's body, and this box will open on its own at a predetermined time. There is also a Sean Boxer. When the flight attendant first notices him, he informs him that he also enjoys boxing, and then he performs some moves that embarrass him and make the other passengers laugh. When Flynn gets up to check on the plane's status, he discovers Claire bothering him and treating him like a monster because what they did put her in a bad position with the other passengers, and she overheard bad words. To his sister, he apologizes for what occurred and walks away. 3J did not sit next to Mercedes and become acquainted with her. The cursed box opens, allowing the snakes to enter the plane. Because the pheromones have made them insane, they begin attacking everything. In the passenger cabin, we meet two guys who are in love. They smoke in the bathroom, 
deactivate the fire alarm, and play together. Then, as they scream, a tired man falls from the ceiling and bites the boy and girl on the neck. Nobody believes anything is wrong because they know what they're doing and believe nothing is dangerous. And the workers continue to move around inside the plane's body. They cut the wires and cause electrical problems when they return to the equipment room. Along the way, the control cabin's alarm goes off, and the captain informs them that there is a disaster and that the plane isn't working properly. Along the way, Rick alerts the control tower to a disaster and requests assistance. Everyone in the car is tired by this point, but no one is doing anything about it. When someone gets up and fears going to the bathroom, he gets tired from the ground and bites him in pain. He hits his head out of fear as a result of the shock and pain, and he falls to the ground. To try to figure out what's wrong, the captain goes down to the equipment room to turn on the power and take control of the plane. A huge snake attacks him, bites him in the neck, and knocks him out the first time he does this. And Rick comes down to assist him, but he believes he died of a heart attack. Claire is terrified, so she rushes over to Flynn and Sanders, takes them to the body, and assists them. Rick reports the incident to the control tower and instructs the passengers to buckle up and stay in their seats, but he is unaware that there is a snake in the cabin in front of him. When he sees him for the first time, he is terrified and continues to hit him until his oxygen masks fall off by accident and fatigue falls from the ceiling. Then, in a terrifying moment, it begins to attack the passengers on the plane. Each exhausted passenger bites the person next to him, causing chaos on the plane. Everyone votes, and they all flee their seats in terror. And Sanders goes downstairs to investigate. When he first looks at the stairs, he notices a large number of snakes in front of him and is unable to move. And you complete all of the fights in Attack of the Insane where riders try to protect themselves while also winning the fights. The plane shakes as a result of the lightning, and the passengers, including Sanders, fall. When he falls, he finds himself in the midst of terrifying rants and screams of terror while biting. And he sees the impending disaster. People are collapsing everywhere, and everyone is exhausted. So he attempts to pass through the chairs, electrocuting any snakes that get in his way. He also instructs everyone to rush to the front of the plane. Because the poison is so potent, anyone who is bitten will almost certainly die. Tommy is in trouble because a snake comes up and bites him while he is hiding, and he has no idea what to do. The rush of people kills one person on the ground, and 3J is terrified and flees to the bathroom. The two people who died in the air fall on him the first time he opens the door. And as long as Flynn is contagious, he sees passengers biting and is powerless to help them because countries aren't tired, not one, not two, but dozens. So he tries to electrocute as many of them as he can, and the first time he gathers them in the front, he starts with the passengers by erecting a dam between them and the tiredness with the bags. And the Mercedes is the best after collapsing and passing out. You can see how exhausted it is, and you're even more terrified when you see dead bodies all around it. She screams that someone is assisting her, but she is unable to move. Shane approaches her, places her on his shoulder, pulls her to the front, and saves her. And the snakes get in because the people in the front close their doors. Claire discovers that Tommy and his brother are not present. She informs Flynn, and he and she continue to search for them until they are discovered hiding, at which point they realize Tommy is injured. Grace, the straitjacket, notices Baby crying in the place of the snakes and rushes to save him. She weaves her way through these monsters until she finds him and quickly places him on her lap before the snake bites him. She defends him with her body and bites him in his place before rescuing him with Maria. She returns to the front, but the poison is extremely dangerous to her and everyone else. Sanders died horribly after ingesting a large amount of poison. Flynn is willing to go to any length to solve this problem and prevent the disaster from worsening. He requests that Rick find a solution, and Rick tells him what I need to do if any of them become tired while we are at 25,000 feet. If he bites the wrong wire, we might fall out of the plane. And he has no choice but to fly for two hours until he reaches the airport and informs the control tower of the situation. Claire searches the plane for a doctor but only finds a dead one with a snake in his bug. This was their only opportunity to save Grace. Flynn doesn't like this, so he calls Harris and tells him that he is certain Eddie put the tiredness in the plane to get rid of Sean, and that even if Sean doesn't bite, the plane will crash and kill him. Harris has always instructed his men to find the best poisonous snake expert as soon as possible. After Lori is bitten in the buttocks, the host informs him that we must absorb the poison in order to lessen its effect. Lori agrees. But when he learns that the host, not his host, will do this, he refuses. Tommy's hand is swollen because the snake that bit him referred to him as weak. Maria is attempting to assist him by obtaining olive oil and piercing the tumor in order to extract the poison. Sean is still sitting there doing nothing because he has no idea how to assist anyone. Flynn becomes enraged and tells him that Eddie did everything for him and that we need to shake him out of it. 
He also tells him that if Eddie dies, it will all be for naught. His job now is to make sure Harris calls on him when he needs to. And when Flynn discovers that the snakes are attempting to break through the barrier they are constructing, he attacks them with a fire extinguisher and fashions weapons out of broken burrs to kill them. Harris is able to contact the infection expert Price and bring him out of the lab to inform him of the situation on the plane. Price informs him that we need to know what types of infections are on the plane so that we can develop antiserum for each one. Hospitals must be prepared because they only have serums for common infections and getting a different serum will take time. Throughout, Price speaks to Flynn and informs him that he is holding them in place. Flynn informs him that he did indeed do this, but it was ineffective. Price then believes that something is driving them insane, and that pheromones are the only thing that could cause them to attack so violently. He asks Flynn to tell him exactly what to do in order to figure out what to do. People are terrified of the players and decide to take the elevator to the second floor, where there are first-class seats. Claire is powerless to stop them. The passengers question Flynn about the slanderers on the plane, but he refuses to answer and tells them to return to where they came from. Sean, on the other hand, informs them that the slanderers are after him because he witnessed a famous gang leader murder someone. Flynn speaks to them here, telling them that he can handle any danger, no matter how big or small, and that they must listen to him if they want to live and arrive safely. The first thing they do is collect any dead snakes they come across so the doctor can identify them and get the antidote to them. Rick is currently sitting in the plane's cockpit and piloting it. He believes he is alone until he looks over and notices a snake next to him. He leaps to his feet and bites the snake on the arm, fighting until the snake falls into the equipment room. When there are so many tired passengers on the plane, Mercedes suggests taking pictures of them and sending them to the doctor. This will make determining who they are faster and easier than if they had to sit and describe each tired person. Claire senses something is wrong because the plane is leaning forward at the time. She dashes to the cabin and discovers Rick on the ground. The snake attacks her and tries to bite her the first time she goes down to help him. When the plane begins to fall rapidly, the passengers realize something is wrong. Flynn rushes to the cabin, discovers what's wrong, and asks Claire to assist him in controlling the plane. The barrier collapses at the same time, and the snakes begin to attack. People flee in terror and fall to the ground, where the snakes begin to bite them. And the only solution is for the other passengers to relocate to the floor above. And right now, a massive snake is falling from the ceiling. People gather on the stairs out of fear, but the wall of the stairs collapses and they all fall to the ground. The large snake attacks the businessman, wrapping itself around him, squeezing him, breaking his bones, and then devouring him whole. And the passengers take advantage of the situation by going outside and erecting a barrier on the stairs. And all of this is happening while Flynn tries with all his might to raise the plane, and with him, Claire, and they will be saved above the sea, and they will be destroyed, and at the last moment they will be able to rise again and save the situation. They inform the control tower of the situation, but they discover that Rick is still alive. He returns to the cockpit and activates the autopilot mode. At this point, the passengers can form a rubber barrier that prevents them from displaying their fatigue. Price learns about the new disaster after seeing images of the swarms. He also discovers that the swarms originate all over the world and that each one requires several days to collect antibiotics. It also takes a long time for someone to collect them, and surely all of these types were already with someone, but there was only one. The fact that he keeps them and lives in the desert is insane enough in America. Everyone on the plane is trying to calm down, and Grace is fighting death, but the fact that she saved the child makes it easier for her. The passengers, on the other hand, notice that it is hot, which means that neither the air conditioner nor the air purifier is working. This will make it difficult to breathe. Flynn approaches Rick to inquire about the status of the plane. He discovers that the engines are also having issues and must be slowed. And in order for the air conditioner to function, someone must go down and manually turn it on. But when he goes outside, he finds a crazy 3J because of the air conditioner, and when he tries to calm him down, the 3J gets even crazier. We learn that he was able to take the gun away from Flynn, and he is so upset that his friends don't believe him and help him until Flynn takes the gun away from him and puts him in his place. And, as a result of the disasters, the electric collector separates her place, Grace dies, and Claire collapses. She believes her end is near, so Flynn appears, hugs her, guides her, and tells her that he can't do it all alone and that he wants her to be strong and united. And he goes downstairs to activate the air conditioners. There are a lot of people in front of him when he first opens the door, but he is able to get rid of them and continue until he reaches the control panel. He is terrified of the wire corridor and has the impression that people are all around him. He is able to reach the operating key, after which snakes attack him, but he is able to extinguish them with fire and turn on the lights and air conditioners. He returns to find himself surrounded by snakes. 
he attempts to defend himself until he falls, at which point a snake quickly bites him. And Harris is able to reach the desert snake farm. He runs up to the insane man, and they both fire at each other. He can hit the insane man, but when he falls on a snake's box and breaks it, the snake bites him. And he doesn't stay in front of him, except to tell Harris where the antitoxin is and to tell him about all the poisons on the plane, as well as how Eddie paid him to buy these poisons from him. They are almost finished with a new case in which they are killing passengers and attempting to kill the rest. All of this information reaches Flynn, and the passengers are relieved to have hope restored. When Flynn goes to talk to Rick, he discovers that he is dead, and the cockpit is full of tired people, so he quickly locks it. They now face a new challenge, no one can fly the plane. They try to find someone in the plane who can fly it, but the only one who can is Tarwa, who has spent over 2000 hours playing the flight simulator game. But now that the fatigues have arrived, they have no reason to be afraid of the cockpit, so Flynn instructs them to securely fasten themselves to the plane seats. He fires at the window, breaking it. Everything inside the plane, including the snakes and their belongings, is sucked out toward land by the air pressure until there are no more snakes in the cabin. As a result, he is terrified of Flynn and Tarwa, who is overjoyed to finally be able to fly a real plane and continues to play with it. Because of the pressure, the opening widens, and Claire and Tiffany cling to the chairs as tightly as they can. Troy is able to control the plane and reduce its altitude slightly so that the pressure remains normal. He speaks to the command tower, and they are taken aback by the way he speaks. They are concerned, however, when they learn that he gained his experience through computer games. They mistook him for a real pilot and told him to fly the plane until someone could figure out how to drive it. However, Flynn informs them that he is the only one with experience in the area and that if they do not assist him in landing, everyone will perish. Troy orders them to clear all of the runways for him and he begins to land the plane. He was flying fast at first, so when he begins to slow down, he can't use the brakes, so he moves the plane next to it until they safely land and scream with joy. And the police and ambulance arrive. The injured are taken out, and they are relieved that they are finally safe. They can also figure out which snake named Tommy and give him the other hand. And it's time for Sean to disembark from the plane. A snake comes out and tries to bite him as he stands at the door, so Flynn pulls out his gun and shoots the snake with fire. And it turns out that Sean is unharmed because he was wearing a protective shirt and the bullets missed him. After Flynn and Sean became friends and each obtained the phone number of a girl they both 